Hello guys and welcome back to another quick tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you a very powerful animation technique in Blender and that is simply how to make any object of your choice follow a curve. Um, these little arrows here, I just added them in for effect but you don't need them. Simply you just need an object of your choice and then a curve. So you can see here I have a stingray in this example and I'm going to show you step by step how to set this all up. Not with a stingray but I'm going to show you how to do this all. I'm going to show you how to um, easily add in a curve, how you can manipulate it, how to consider the direction of the curve. And also we're going to look at some of the parameters of the curve. So like, for example, the length of time you want your object to go around a curve. So all of those things are going to be packed into this neat little tutorial. And it should be something that's going to be very beneficial to um, your animation inside of Blender. So let's jump in and I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so what we're going to do is set up a quick little scene here. So let's go shift A, let's add in the Suzanne monkey head. It's a little bit more interesting and we're going to select the default cube and just delete it. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to right click and go shade smooth. And let's just get straight to the actual um, curve animation. So we need to add in a curve first of all. So we're going to go shift A and the best curve to use is the Bezier curve. So we're going to go ahead and add that in. And over here, you can see we have the Bezier curve. And I'm just gonna scale Suzanne down a bit and just move her up somewhere here. So now we can see the curve here. We're just gonna tab into edit mode and we can grab these handles here to control the curve. You have one here and one here. Um, but if you want to, you can also go ahead and press E to extrude and you can press R to rotate like so. And you can manipulate these little handles in 3D space. And this way you can put a curve wherever you want you can even delete the whole curve. And then while you're still in edit mode, you can go here to the draw curve tool and then just draw a curve. So you can literally draw your own animation if you wanted to. Okay, so the idea here is we just need a curve. Okay, it doesn't matter how you shape it. But we want the monkey head now to go along this curve. So the way we do it, you select the object that you want to do this to. You're gonna go over to your constraint, object constraint properties. We're gonna click on add object constraint and then go to follow path. So you've added the follow path. Then you're gonna click on a little eyedropper and then select the path. In this case, it's the Bezier curve. So just click on that. And now if you come here to animate path and you click on that, you can now come to frame one or whatever, hit the space bar and it's gonna follow along. Now this is kind of okay, but the problem is it's not realistic because the monkey head is not following along. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come here go and go to uh, follow curve. So now if we go to frame one and hit the space bar, it's gonna also follow the direction of the curve. Now, if you wanna influence the rotation here, what you could do is you can come to these things here. So you can change the different axes and try different ones. And depending on where your object is pointing to, where you have it placed, this could be different. So in my case, it looks like Z is the best option. And I could use something like um, in this case, I'm just quickly going to hide it here and I can see here if I tab into edit mode, I'm going to rotate the monkey head just 90 degrees on the Z. So if I turn it back on, um, it's facing the way I want. In this case, it's not. So I might come here and try the X. You could just experiment around. In this case, the monkey is facing the way I want. You can also just move Suzanne as well or whatever your object is. You can see this little blue line. That's your constraint line. So you can place this wherever you want and it'll automatically follow the curve. Now there's one more thing we need to look at here because what if you have an animation that's 300 frames long and you want it to run for that long? In this case, you can see it only goes 100 frames. So what you do, you're gonna select a curve object. You're gonna to go to your object data properties for the curve. And then you're gonna go here to path animation. And over here, you can set the frames. In this case, I'm gonna set it to 300. And now it'll go the full duration of my timeline here. And this is the way you can control this sort of thing. And you can see here now that's happening. I can grab it at any point and I can come here and adjust this. And this is a very powerful tool. So if you have like a point A and a point B, so I'll just quickly put this little sphere here. Maybe that's my point A and this is my point B. Um, this is kind of a cool way you can do this. Also, just one more thing before I forget, I almost forgot to mention this. If you go into your um, animation path and you want to know which direction it's heading, what you can do is go over inside of edit mode, go to your overlays and then enable the handles down here for the normals. And now you can actually see the direction that it's going. Um, so if you didn't like that, for example, you could delete and then you can come in here 
and you can just draw it a different direction if you needed to. You can see what's happening here. So uh, just important to mention that directional bit. So now you can see Suzanne is going the other way. So I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.